shares popping here in after hours trading. The company reporting a better than expected quarter looking at gains of just about 9%. A lot of that being fueled by the guidance that we got 2Q revenue outlook beating the streets estimates. We want to bring in Brent Thill, Jeffrey's senior analyst. Brent, your initial take at these numbers. Clean sweep for big tech, uh, Microsoft, Google, Meta, you know, we're still going through all the numbers, but I'd just say that expectations from tech investors are just way too bearish. Everyone thinks the world is taking another leg down and we're not seeing that. You're seeing across the board, a lot of these names just put up uh, very clean numbers. And the fear factor is that there's a giant boogeyman in the closet and it's gonna take down tech again. And everyone's opening the closet and there's a giant teddy bear giving you a big hug. That's the analysis. It, it is, uh, I have, I've done this for a long time and I've never seen how negative investors are in tech and rightfully so, right? We saw a big contraction uh, as it relates to uh, overall um, the sentiment last year in tech and it was a, a hard year for all of us, but I think ultimately we just went to, to super over bearish and again, Great, great discipline on expense. You're seeing that now in earnings. They now have to demonstrate the next leg, which uh, for the stock is really going to be the revenue re-acceleration. Re re and so that's going to re-accelerate to you know, mid to high single digit growth in the back half of the year. But we'll want to hear more about you know, what's going to happen in the back half here and how, how they can, can pump that up. Um, the checks you know, that we have with advertisers is that they have lapped the iOS changes. They are seeing... Uh, better ROI on the, the meta platform, Instagram in particular. Uh, they are encouraged that Mark Zuckerberg has stayed out of the press, and that has helped uh, for advertisers because they don't have to ask questions from their clients uh, as you post a picture of him. Uh, so I think ultimately uh, there's been many things that are going right, but I think the common theme here is, you know, tech is tech is is strong, stronger than most people think. Yes, we're fading, but but things are a lot better than than, uh, than the bears have been uh, expecting. Teddy bears in this case. And you had me at the giant teddy bear uh, giving you a hug here, Brent. Um, the year of efficiency, how successful was it? Do you sense that the layoffs are behind Meta? I don't think they're all behind. I think that, you know, I think that what they're learning is they they can do this and it's actually good uh, for morale and, and, and shareholder value and the employee value over time. And it's hard to go through these changes the tech just got overweight. You know, we we talk about you know way too much, too, too many hires. It couldn't support, and ultimately, I think even for some of those employees that have left, while it's difficult, it's actually the right thing for everyone. Uh, and there's an incredible surge of, of demand in a lot of other places. So, I, I think ultimately, what you've seen is a theme of belt tightening, uh, a theme that we need to get on the peloton more. We need to cut back our intake of food, and that's good. And we're seeing this across all of tech. <laughs> it's just it's happening, uh, it, it, you know, across the group. So I, I just say that I think this was needed. We needed this. Uh, we needed this diet. And we think the health is being restored to the industry. And that's going to help everyone involved. Well, it's certainly helping Metastock here after hours. Brett, what do you make of the recovery? What's your sense of the recovery that we're seeing in the ad market? Because ad revenue here for Meta for the most recent quarter, 28 billion, better than what the street was looking for. I think they've gained share back. I don't think advertisers are doing backflips and spending money like crazy. I think what's happening is Meta has improved their ROI. We've heard great uh, examples from advertisers that they've been excited about their click the message product. They've been excited about the ROI that they've seen. They've they've been excited uh, about the refocus of the company away from the metaverse back to the core advertising uh, opportunity. Um, so I think. You know, advertisers all quarter in Q1 said, hey, things aren't perfect, but Meta is actually improving their competitiveness. And while all we could talk about last year was TikTok coming onto the scene, it was uh, it was the new kid at school. Um, it was the cool kid and everyone flocked to that kid. Uh, I think now you you've you know, Meta's winning some of that back. I don't think that, you know, uh, TikTok is is lost it. I just think that Meta has has stopped the bleed. Reels has gotten more attention. You know, as I've said, we've gone from the mom 
uh, and the and the girl dancing in the kitchen to now real content you can find on Reels that's a, that's relevant to whatever your like is. And we kind of we we made that jump. We've seen uh, some of their new advertising tools uh, be announced uh, last year, and these advertising tools are helping find new audiences for advertisers. They're helping uh, make suggestions that perhaps um, advertisers didn't really know what was happening. And so there's AI infused, if you will, suggestions that are helping advertisers get more uh, for their money. So I think overall, you know, it was just consistent in all the checks that we run when we talk to advertisers that they're slowly gaining some of the credibility back that they lost through the iOS Apple change. And we've lapsed that now, they've gotten more focus. And, and I've said this, I think as they get leaner, they can be faster. And anyone that's gone on a no carb diet understands this. When you get off carbs, it's it stinks for a few days. But once you once you get to the other side, you feel a lot better. And I think they're on the other side of this now. They're not they're not all the way through, but they're on the other side. That's going to make them a lot leaner and meaner and more efficient. And that should continue to help uh, them drive you know additional shareholder value. Again, we're talking about a stock that doesn't have a huge multiple. Still, even while the stock is up, you know, close to 80% year to date. So there's still room uh, to run, in our opinion, and that'll now come on the revenue reacceleration in the back half of the year. Can't help but think of Zuck on a, a Peloton at the moment. <laughs> uh, let, they did have a massive uh, Facebook glitch in terms of advertising over the weekend. Not entirely clear what the impact is. Maybe some refunds coming. Want to mention the buzzword that we have to get into AI. Their CFO says uh, 30 to 33 billion in capital expenditures, reflecting their build out of AI capacity to support ads, feed, reels, along with increased investment in capacity for our generative AI initiatives. Uh, how well positioned are they on AI? I think they're extremely well positioned. I mean, they talked about this last October that their big investment wave were in these new AI clusters. And I think anyone that's been on Instagram and I've been on a long time, you know, they really <laughs> populate what is relevant to you. And I think they've always done a great job and advertisers have always believed that the relevance of whatever you're interested in, that it would it would represent that to you. And, and so I've said this repeatedly, I don't think people care if they're advertised to, they just wanna have the right content, the right music, sports, entertainment, whatever you're into, they wanna have that geared. And I think it's only gonna get better in terms of as they continue to build out these, these AI clusters. And that will come in the form of, of written content, it may be in stocks, it may be in, in music, it, it, it comes across different forms. So it may not just even be a picture. I mean, it could be it could be a video. And and I think again, we're uh, I'm at the Jeffries Private Internet Conference meeting with a number of AI companies right now in Santa Monica. And I just say that overall, I, I think many have felt that the day for AI would come. I think it's it's here. I don't think it's hype. I think a lot of this is real. You're already seeing it show up in Microsoft's numbers that's starting to aid their Azure business and will add their applications business. So for, for the companies that are gonna benefit, it's the companies that have big big user bases and content, and that's Meta, Amazon, uh, Google, and Microsoft. So I think they're in a great position. It's still the way AI wave fully hasn't hit yet, but it's it's to come. But I, I'd say they, just to be clear, I think they've already embraced AI and done a really nice job of, of recommendations uh, in the past. And I think it's, again, it feels like it's only going to get better, but it's, it's already really good. And that's why advertisers are spending here. That's why you're seeing the numbers that you're seeing. Um, and so I think, yeah, the biggest concern has always been it's fueled by a lot of SMB, small and mid-sized uh, advertisers. And, you know, that the health of SMBs have been called into question. I think clearly uh, they're feeling healthy, large enterprises feeling okay. Um, overall, I mean, Big tech's feeling a little bit better than I think most people thought. So that's it's good we found the teddy bear, not the uh, not the monster in the closet. <laughs> Hugging teddy bears, cutting carbs, hopping on the Peloton. Jeffrey's Brent Thill bringing it. Good to see you. Thank you, sir.